Welcome back to What RT Noobs with General Disturbance, and this is a GW Tiger P, the Tier 8 German SPG, and we're on the north spawn of Mountain Pass, and it's being commanded by Entel Zahn. Yes, you've seen one of his replays only a short while ago, and this time it's on a different map, uh, so we'll see how he gets on in this one. Battle's underway and he's moving right away. Previously, there's always been a delay before he actually comes to life, but I think that may be that the program's still loading. But he's headed off to the trees. He's not going to go up the rise. As you can see, there is a Lorraine going up the rise right now. He's going to set up in the bushes. And this time round, he's only got four rounds of eight, uh, premium and 11 rounds of standard ammo. This, this RT only carries 15 rounds in total. So it is actually quite possible that you would actually end up with a Faden's medal. Right, now, going to the, um, to the trees to the left actually does appear to have been the smart move because that T92 is pushing the ridge line. And if he'd spotted the uh, GW Tiger P on top of the rise, like the, where the Lorraine 15551 is, that might have been curtains for Entel Tsar, because I think the enemy RT would have homed in on him straight away. Now he's not going to be able to hit that T92 because he's just too close and he's trying to fire down a ridgeline. Or into a dip, I should say, into the bowl. Okay, he can't hit that one, but he can hit the ice road very nicely. It's 65 ton there. Dialing in. He's still loading. Almost ready to go. Perfectly dialed in. He's marking his target. He's used his tiki to tell everyone what he's up to. He's ready. Rounds out. Should be on the money. Oh, it fell short. Now that's so unfair. He did stun the 65 ton, but that should have been right on top of him. That's bad RNG, I'm afraid. It was perfectly aimed right on top of the front of the tank. So that shell should have actually knocked out the driver, knocked out everybody. But as it is, it just missed. Now he's going for the 65 ton again. Or is he going to go for this mutant? It's that uh, funny looking tank with a high turret. Rounds out on 65 ton. And that's where the, that's what he should have happened the last time round. He's wiped him out. Picked up 285 hit points. And he actually did 102 hit points of splash to the VK. Again, he's signalling his target and his reload status. That's one of the, the critical things I could say to any tank, any RT player. You must indicate your target. You must let them know how long for the next round goes out. We don't play one-handed. We play two-handed. We have to use our other hand to indicate what our next target is and adjust the aim accordingly. And that round... Oh! He hit both of them there. He got the Mutant and the VK101. He's picked up over 600 hit points of damage off that one shot. And he's waiting for the reload to go in. Yes, so we use both hands. If you see any player on a stream or whatever trying to play with one hand and eat a meal with the other hand, he's not playing RT properly because you don't play RT one-handed. You have to play with two hands. You've got too much information to pass on to your colleagues. And you need to let them know what you're doing so they can act accordingly. Because if they know when your shells are coming out, like this one's about to go, it rounds out. Then they can take the appropriate action to move up on the target and hit it with uh, some shells while it's still stunned. And you pick up stun assistance. Now he's signalling some attention to be paid to the T10 uh, on the uh, ridgeline in E3. I think Intel Tsar realises there's a weak point there because one of the tanks has moved up from the, the dip, from the bowl. And they need to push that T10 down. So the Skoda's gone around the corner. Entelzar's now going to target the T26E4, who's using that rock for cover. But that's not going to help him from being splashed. Round out. It goes long. 
Oh, oh, but he did stun the T26 because he's just picked up some stun assistance. The RT round came in from the Lorraine just after he fired. Right now, that T10 is just too close for him to hit, and he's on that uh, that dip. The T26 is backing away. There are three tanks down at the moment, but um, he certainly picked up a lot of damage. He's done 1,347 hit points of damage, and <laughs> and that T26 E4 was just too risking it too much to try to go into the dip and hit the enemy tanks there because it did not work. Okay, round went in. It was near the target. Yes, he did stun the mutant. Okay, and that VK and the mutant are way too close. He could get a bombardier. If he placed the shell right, he could splash both of them at the same time. But they've moved apart now. I'm pretty sure they're going to move together again. Yep, the mutant and the VK are moving up as one. Oh, please, it would be so nice to get a bombardier, but he's getting a red line as they get closer. There's still two tanks down. Now he's going to have to reposition, I think, because he's getting red lines a lot. So he's backing up just a little to open up the angle so he can get a shot directly into the T-10 as he gets close. And of course he's also worried about the VK-101 and the mutant coming up the... Uh, oh, it's actually only the T-54 now. The mutant's gone down. But they will be coming up the ice road. Now he's positioning to hit the ice road the moment they're spotted. Oh, it would be really nice if he could actually end up with a bombardier. Lorraine's going around the corner, so he's going to ambush them if they make it to the cap area. The Scorpion, well, he's handling the castle with that T-10. Oh, he's just been hit by the enemy tip SU-14 too. Now, how did they manage to spot him? I think he must have knocked down a tree, and they saw the tree being knocked down. Now, is he going to stay there? Because the SU-14-2 will fire at this spot again. Scorpion has finished with the T-10. Now, he's coming with the IS-3. They're ignoring the T-54. They're coming around. They recognise the problem on the ice road. We need somebody to spot. Now, if that Scorpion pokes his head around the corner, he can get an eyes on the target. And then Entelzar can put a round into him. Any second now, I think. There's the VK. Oh, and he's killed by the Scorpion. There's the enemy, Lorraine. Why did he go there? Rounds out. Kill shot. 390 hit points. One shot kill. And Entelzar's moving. He doesn't want to get a repeat shell from that SU-14. But he signals an affirmative after the Scorpion G says nice. It certainly was. But that mutant wasn't killed. He's actually come up the other way. But could easily shotgun him here. If he comes around that corner. I wonder if he's going to get a chance to put. A 17 centimeter howitzer shell directly into the front of that mutant. He's rolling up to the corner. Oh, and both of them have been wiped out. That means there's only one tank left. The SU-14-2 that actually hit until Zar. So he's very happy now. The Lorraine's off. <laughs> he wants to get there first. <laughs> he wants to shotgun the enemy. Of course, the SU-14-2 is also known as the school bus because it looks like a big school bus. <laughs> and it's very slow to move about. I think Entel Zar wants to get there, but I, I think he's so slow, there's no chance that he's going to get there first. No, I suspect what he's going to do, he's going to sit there and he's going to wait for the others to spot. Oh, tree went down. He knows where he is now. He's marking the spot. Tree went down there on the edge. Now, I hope that Artie is not taking this opportunity to uh, dive over the edge. 
If so, it might be very difficult to well, get him. It is possible to get down into the bottom, into that dip there, um, and survive the, the drop um, at the bottom by clinging to the edge. But the only alternative there would be to actually cap. Now he's loaded a premium round. Rounds out. No, I don't think he's there. I think he moved. He went. He, I think he's in the dip, actually. I think he's gone down into the river area. The His teammates are at the cap area now. He hasn't marked the target again. But they know where he was indicating. Yep, he's indicating again. I think if they go up to the edge there, they'll find that the enemy is in the dip. IS3 is having a look. He's signalled affirmative. Oh, he is there. There he is. And he is clinging to the edge. Okay, IS3 I think is going to go over the edge and shoot him in the side. Try and drown him, I think. No, oh dear, the SU-14, <laughs> and he's taken out. <laughs> he's killed by the Scorpion G, who came round the side, uh, made his way up, and then shot him uh, from side on. Oh dear, let's have a look at that one. Uh, so those rounds weren't wasted. They did indicate to, the, to his team exactly where he was, and unfortunately, that SU-14 made it into the dip before he could actually do anything about it. But it was the second-class tanker for Intel Sartre and the GW Tiger P. He also picked up a Bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. He got 11, and there was no other medals, I'm afraid, but uh, it was a good battle. Um, he actually came third on damage, 2,334 hit points. Uh, he came joint oh, joint third on kills with two, um, along with Leopard Prototype. And when it came to base XP, he was third with 845. He fired 11 rounds, got two direct hits, two penetration, and nine splash. He did damage of 2,334 hit points, all at more than 300 meters. He received one hit as a result of splash damage from the SU-14 2 and I reckon he did get that hit because he knocked a tree down and the SU-14 2 was looking for him at that time and aimed for him but didn't get the aim precisely right and that's how he ended up with some damage. He hit six of the enemy got um, um, and destroyed two and he also did stun assistance damage of 626 hit points caused by nine stuns. On a premium account he earned 38,109 credits and after repair of the vehicle and ammunition resupply, he only had 989 credits spare. So if he hadn't been hit, if he hadn't knocked that tree down, uh, then uh, he wouldn't have. Uh, he would have actually come away with a, a decent profit. But he only made 989 credits instead. Um, he received 1,268 XP, and there was a personal reserves bonus going at the same time. So he took away 2,536 in total. But yes, it was a very tense battle because at uh, several moments during that battle, there were several tanks down and it did look as if the enemy were succeeding. But I think the sustained RT fire was really having an effect upon them. And it, also the fact that they did have a fairly good um, um, other couple of players. The Scorpion G uh, was certainly tangling with uh, quite a few. Um, and uh, so he helped a great deal and so did the uh, Lorraine 15551 who got one kill and the IS3 with three um, but uh, that Scorpion yes five kills 4378 damage uh, John Blind is obviously a very good Scorpion driver so I watch out for him if you see him on the opposite type team because he's probably going to try and take you out <laughs> anyway <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this replay uh, if you did, please give it a like and do subscribe to our channel and hopefully it'll be your replay that I'll be featuring in our next video.